The strange, the bizarre, the unusual, I like it. R. A. Swaller de la Vix. Hello everybody, welcome to the strange, the bizarre, the unusual, I like it, I'm Roger Hansen and today I'm going to share a reading about R.A. Swaller de Lubix, it's L-U-B-I-C-Z, I don't know really how to pronounce that, um, but usually I've always said R.A. Swaller, <clears throat> and today I'm going, or I'm, there's going to be actually two parts to this video. Um, the first one's going to be some of the notes I took on Facebook you know, on September the 3rd, 2013, and then I'm going to do another one with a little bit of video on it. This one's just going to have my background while I read. It's just going to be a reading, and then I'll do a part two, which is the other one. And we'll have a little bit more that you can look at and everything. But with that said, I am going to start the reading. Rene Adolphe Swaller de Le Bix was, or lived between 1887 until 1961. He was born Adolf Swaller in Alsace-Lorraine and was a French occultist, student of sacred geometry, and alternative Egyptologist known for his 12-year study of the, alt, uh, in, of the art and architecture of the Temple of Luxor in Egypt. In his subsequent book, The Temple in Man, Rene Swaller left home at the age of 18 after having completed an apprenticeship with his father in pharmaceutical chemistry. Moving to Paris from Alsace, or Alsace, A L S A C E to study modern chemistry and physics. He developed an interest in alchemy. Reading early alchemical texts he could find, including those by Paracelsus and Raymond Lull. He also developed an interest in painting and became the student of Matisse. Matisse, okay, became the student of Matisse. He was given the title De Le Bix in 1990 by the Lithuanian writer, mystic, and diplomat Oscar Vladislas De Le Bix Malasks. And that is Oscar Vladislas 
B L A D I S L A S De Lubis Bits L U B I C Z and then Malaz L or M I O or L M I L O S Z. <clears throat> he also wrote under the mystical name Aor A O R signifying light of the higher mind. He became a student of theosophy in St. Yves de Alvedras Sinarchy, which is St. Yves Y or capital Y lowercase v e s d Alvedras a L B A Y D R E S and then Synarchy S Y N A R C H Y. Okay, Les Villiers Vill Swallager de la Bukes was the founder was the founder in nineteen nineteen with other members of the Theosophical Society of the Esoteric Right Wing French group called Afrancis that published <coughs> a journal Afranchi Hierarchy Fraternite Liberté a monthly journal of art and philosophy dealing with a spiritual and social renew within the framework of a mystical political philosophy. Its president was René Brailles, or Br Brouillez. On 23rd July 1919, the group dissolved and another group was formed in its place. Les Bellores, the Vigilance, to which allegedly the young Rudolf Hess belonged, according to the historian Pierre Mariel. Its uniform consisted of a dark shirt, high boots, and riding breeches, akin to the Sturmabotalon. Thus, Villiers delivered its manifesto in December 1919. Its politics conveyed through a series of letters called appeals and signed by its members. The letter signed by Aor was addressed to the Jews, was addressed to the Jews, where he advised all Jews to go back home. The first issue of its journal, Belayors, contained an anonymous anti-Semitic article that first appeared in a Masonic journal in 1898. The artist Andre Vandenbroek, in his memoirs and biographies of Swaller de la Bukes, described him as anti-Semitic and Jocelyn Godwin commented Swaller de la Buc was not sufficiently vindictive to persist in the course of action followed by Hess and Hitler, but nor was he sufficiently humane. It would seem to regret his contribution to the, to the currents of the time. Sahalia. During the 1920s, with his wife Isha Swaller Le de la Bukes established a Switzerland established in Switzerland the station Scientific Q Sahalia, a research center consisting of laboratories for physics, chemistry, microphotography and the manufacture of hemopathic tinctures 
was set up along with an astronomical observatory, a machine shop, workshops for woodworking, blacksmithing, <coughs> printing, weaving, rug making, and glass making, and a theater. While there, Swaller de la Bukes brought to a total whole his philosophy, his philosophical vision, and in 1926 published his book, Le Appel de Few, where his inspiration and higher intelligence is personified as Aor, Hebrew for intellectual light. Sahalia became the location where he began to elaborate his philosophy of the evolution of consciousness. Swaller de la Bisques, or the Bix, lived in Egypt for 12 years studying the temples of Thebes in detail. He was the French e Egypt Egyptologist. He, with the French Egyptologist Alexand Alexander Beryl, developed the simplest approach to ancient Egypt. He argued that Egyptian temples were used for mystical initiations and that their design incorporated symbolism expressing a brief system that combined religion, philosophy, art, and science. He believed, for instance, that the Egyptians were aware of astronomical concepts like, like axial procession, which was reflected in their religious beliefs. He linked the astrological age of Gemini with the development of the dualist themes in Egyptian religion. The age of Taurus was the bull god, Apis, and the age of Ares was the god Amun, who was depicted as a ram. He also argued that the human form was the basis for ancient Egyptian architecture, and he equated parts of the temple with parts of the human body. His three-volume work, The Temple of Man, includes a drawing that compares the plan of Lexor Temple to the shapes or to the shape of a human skeleton. Lynn Picknett and Clive Prince argue that these ideas were influenced by Swaller de la Bic's existing beliefs, such as synarchy and theosophy. Like many other esotericist figures, he believed that Egyptian civilization dated back much farther than conventional Egyptian chronology allows. Mainstream Egyptologists have largely ignored his claims or views or viewed them with hostility, although Eric Hernong points out that his survey of Lexer Temple contains information useful to anyone studying the temple today. He is an influential figure among the advocates of theories about ancient Egypt that challenge the conclusion of mainstream Egyptology theorist theories, mainstream Egyptology theories that are sometimes labeled alternative Egyptology. Many adherents of George Gurdjieff's Fourth Way find parallels in Swaller de la Buke's writing and he has been an, an inspiration to authors like John Anthony West who, who claims about, about the great age of the great Sphinx of Giza are inspired by those of Swaller de la Bics and Naomi Ozaniak. 
Now his works are Etudes sur les Nombres or Publications in 1970, English translation titled A Study on the Numbers, A Guide to the Constant Creation of the Universe, Rochester, Vermont, Inner Traditions, International, 1986. ISBN 0-89281-112-9. La Appel du Foy or Fou, F E U, Saint Marquis, Montalia, 1926. Facsimile reprint Duilla Le Barre MCOR dash Le Table de Emiradu E M E R A U D E two thousand two ISBN two nine one four nine four six dash zero zero seven Adam I. Home Rogue, O Les Elements du Un, Nos pour le Marriage Parfait, H. Le Soldier, 1926, Repent Print, Le Board de la Vie, 2009, ISBN. 2-918062-04-9 Le Temple Dans I Home Le Carré Impre De Skellendler 1949 English translation titled The Temple in Man the Secrets of Ancient Egypt, Brookline Autumn Press, 1977, the ISBN is 0-394-42079-9, published in 1981 by Inner Traditions, titled The Temple in Man, Sacred Architecture and the Perfect Man. ISBN 0-89281-021-1 Now he's got a whole lot of them, but I wanted to go ahead and put some of them out there. And if you guys are interested in those, check them out. And like I said, I'll have a part 2 to this here uh, coming up, and I will do a little bit more on the research. I hope you did enjoy this video and like I said um, I've been keeping tabs on uh, YouTube and Facebook and apparently there's an article 13 that's about to take place in Europe that's going to prevent YouTubers and video makers from using pictures because of copyright infringement. So, I'm trying to work on setting up my own content and getting it started, and hopefully that'll work out, but first I've got to get things together and do that myself without any kind of content coming off of the internet. So, trying to hold off on screen capturing anything that has pictures or anything of that sort. I'll do a few of them here and there, but that's about it. So, uh, like I said, I hope you did enjoy the video, and thank you for listening. My name is Roger Hansen, and this is The Strange, The Bizarre, The Unusual. I like it. Please, you know, leave some feedback, and let me know what you think about this video, and any of the videos that I do make.
the strange, the bizarre, the unusual, I like it. Thanks for watching. If you like the vid like the video, please like, subscribe, share, make comments. We love feedback.